The following program contains material which may be offensive to some hand tool woodworkers. Power tool guidance is advised. It makes wooden hex nets. Yeah, that's it. That's all it can do. To design this jig, I dissect the motion of cutting a wooden thread into two components, a vertical component and a rotational component. So if you can imagine, when you have a router bit, in order to cut this thread, the bit needs to circle around and move down to advance to subsequent layers. For the vertical motion, I designed this system that uses a lot of hinges to ensure that this platform is always parallel to the surface below. So now with the machine screw through here, there's precise control of the vertical position. For the rotational component, a router will be mounted to this circle off-center so that when this circle goes into this hole and as you spin it around, the router bit will follow a circular motion in accordance with the diameter of the screw thread. Using a keyhole router bit like this one, that will create just the pattern that's needed for a square thread. All that's left is to control the relationship between vertical position and rotational motion. For that, gears. But because this little gear will be moving up and down relative to this surface, this spacer is required to ensure the gears mesh. So let me put all this together, including the router, and then we'll take a closer look at how the bit moves. Here is what the cutter will look like. Here's the build process. I've already cut out the basic shapes, which are two 12-inch squares and four 12-inch by 2-inch rectangles. The most difficult part, really, is cutting the gears. Watch my video from last month to see how I did that. Now I just mark the center of the big gear and drill a hole so I can use this on my router table circle cutting jig. That's the hole cut out, and off camera I cut a circle that should fit in here. I recommend starting with it a little bit oversized and creeping up on the final dimensions. Perfect. Here, I'm figuring out where to center the router. This is specific to the diameter of the thread the hex nut is being created for. Once the location is marked, I'll drill out a quarter inch hole, and a quarter inch router bit will fall directly into place. The mounting holes for the router are now marked. With the specifics of the router mount taken care of, I move on to create the spacer for the big gear. The router table circle cutting setup is pretty great. Screws will secure the spacer to the previous part. I chose to use machine screws, and although I only show drilling pilot holes, off camera I tapped the threads and countersunk the side of entry so all hardware sits flush with the surface of the wood. The big gear comes next. I use its center hole to figure out the correct position. Now mark and pre-drill the holes, and only then cut the inner circle.
Finally, I'll screw on the router base to complete the assembly. Now making all the hinges. I basically bought a 6 foot piano hinge and cut it into 6 1 foot pieces. I write down where each hinge will be, then mark centers, pre-drill, and screw them down. Now the whole thing folds up and I can fasten the final screws. This little gear is the only remaining part. The first pass is made with a quarter inch straight cutter that makes it easier on the keyhole bit later on. And now the keyhole bit that will create the thread. At the miter saw, I shape it to actually resemble a hex nut. So there's the nut, but of course I have to make a bolt to prove that it works. I used John Heiss' method for cutting wooden threads at the router table. It worked out pretty great. I highly recommend his video. Here's a head for that bolt. And the moment of truth. With the edges chamfered, there's the bolt and nut in final shape. Well, that turned out pretty darn cool. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, I don't have any idea what I'm actually going to do with these wooden hex nuts now, but if you have any thoughts, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Uh, otherwise, I don't have plans available for this jig, but I hope the video went through all the details you need if you decide to make your own version. Uh, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me and I'll do my best to help out. Otherwise, until next time, take care guys!